this is your news source evening bulletin for today thursday the 21st day of november in the year 2019 here is what we're tracking tonight the apmu and afc are reassuring their supporters that the two parties will be heading into the next elections as a strong coalition representatives from the two parties emerged from a high-level meeting at the president's office this afternoon with smiles in their faces and assurance says that the apmu and afc are stronger together Alliance for Change leader Kamraj Ramjatan said there is no doubt that the APNU and AFC will remain together for the March 2020 elections. Do you see me smiling, by? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. This two persons um, are going to make a statement uh, later. How is it going, though? Is the coalition, is the APNU AFC going to go into the elections as a coalition? Certainly, we're going into as elections as a coalition. I can tell you that. Together is better. Please, it's all right. He said the meeting between the two sides was excellent, adding that the party representatives, Valda Lawrence and David Patterson, will issue a joint statement later. The meeting brought together President David Granger as the leader of the APNU, Kemraj Ramjatan as the leader of the AFC, Chairman of the PNC, Valda Lawrence, and AFC General Secretary David Patterson. Ms. Lawrence said the coalition has always been strong. We met, and you'll hear from us shortly. You'll hear from us shortly. Is the coalition strong for the election? She has always been strong. Why would you ask such a question? Because we've been hearing about deadlines and oh, pulling out. Those things, my y'all misrepresenting the facts. Well, that's what we were told. Hmm. No. Be good. You'll hear from us shortly, okay? You'll hear from us. And the AFC's David Patterson said the meeting was very progressive and there might be another meeting to wrap up minor issues. Uh, we'll make a DC, we we'll make a, a, a announcement shortly. Um, so that's about it, you know what I mean? So is this, was this the final talk or will you be meeting again? Um, we probably, most likely we'd have to sit down to um, wrap up some things. But it was a good meeting? Uh, it, it was progressive. Last week the AFC threatened that it was willing to head into the elections on its own if there was not an agreement on the remaining issues by this past Monday. The Monday deadline came and went with the party offering no other statement. Yesterday, President David Granger brushed aside talk of deadlines and pointed out that agreement and not deadlines will be guiding the talks. The president said he wants the agreement to put together the best government that will benefit the people of Guyana. More news coming up in a moment. It's bigger, it's better, it's back. It's GTT's plus size Christmas promotion. Connect with your friends and loved ones with GTT services to benefit from our biggest ever Christmas bundle of specials and be one of our plus size winners. Visit our website or call 227-9444 for more information today. Big bundles for you. Big bundles for you. Top up a granny, make a winner out of you. We got a game show for you. Game show for you. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Enter the GBTI Quick Cash Christmas promotion and make it a Christmas to remember. You get up to $500,000 easy for anything you want this Christmas. Plus, enter for a chance to win fabulous items for your home. One complete 7-foot granite top base kitchen cabinet, one sectional suite, one five-piece dinette set, and complimentary baskets of goodies. Apply at your nearest branch or online at www.gbtibank.com. GBTI, we see Christmas through your eyes. Fuel it up and drive, super, 95, tune up. Fuel it up and drive, super, 95, tune up. Protect your fuel system, boy. High mileage and performance, boy. Guy Oil Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Guyana's largest petroleum summit and exhibition is set to take place on November 20th to 22nd at the Guyana Marriott Hotel. 
The second edition of the GAN International Petroleum Exhibition, GPEX, will see participation from a range of local and international companies. The exhibition is open to members of the public on the 22nd of November from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The event is being organized by Valiant Business Media in partnership with the Department of Energy, Ministry of the Presidency, with support from the Ghana Office for Investment. Go Invest! GPEX 2019 in Guyana, the gateway to a golden future. Welcome back. Hours after his extradition to Ghana from the U.S., murder accused Marcus Bizram appeared at a Wim Magistrate's court to formally face the charge of murder related to the death of Carpenter Fayaz Narindat. Bizram, who was heavily guarded by the police, smiled and waved to persons outside the courthouse as he made his way in and out of the courtroom. The charge is an indictable one and therefore he was not required to enter a plea. The body of 26-year-old Fayaz Narindat was discovered on number 70 Public Road currently in Burbis on the 31st of October back in 2016. The man had been beaten to death and repeatedly run over by a vehicle. His body bore other marks of violence. As investigators narrowed their probe, Bizram emerged as the alleged mastermind of the murder, but he had already departed Guyana. It is alleged that he orchestrated the man's murder after a sexual request was turned down. Five other persons were arrested and charged in connection with the same murder, and they are currently behind bars awaiting trial. Some of those arrested pointed fingers to Bizram as the mastermind. All the evidence unearthed during the probe led investigators to formally make a request for his extradition from the U.S. Bizram spent the past three years fighting his extradition going all the way to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. All of the courts denied his request to stay his extradition, and moves began for his removal from the U.S. He arrived in Guyana early this morning and was immediately taken into custody by the Criminal Investigations Department of the Police Force. He was accompanied to Guyana by U.S. agents who handed him over to local law enforcement. Well, while maintaining that the entire house-to-house -house registration process remains invalid, opposition leader Barrett Jagdeo said given the decision to add that data to the new official list of electors, he wants the data properly scrutinized so as to avoid any duplicates. At his weekly press conference today, Mr. Jagdeo spoke about his meeting earlier this week with the chairman of GCOM, Justice Claudette Singh. The last two weeks they put out the house-to-house -house data that there was no order. Because this is, if there was an order amending that um, order, we'd like to see it. But there was no order. The house to house data was just put in, posted. No instruction came to the public. No order was issued. And therefore, the house to house data was not subjected to the claims and objection legally. Jack Deo said a number of his questions were not properly answered during that meeting and the party that he heads does not want to see anyone being disenfranchised at the upcoming elections. Once those names are verified to be real and they're not on the PLE or they're not captured in the claims and objection, then we will not have a problem for them to be added to the revised voters list because we I know we want every Ghanaian to have a right to vote. I don't care whether they support APNU or not, but they must have the right to vote. The right to vote. And that's why we're prepared to accept that. And that's the only way forward we see it, if, if they insist on using the data. With the claims and objections period over, Mr. Jack is of the opinion that there will be names of the list repeating themselves on the official list of electors. Now, they're having a hard time in GCOM finding out who the new registrants are. And on, they may have to very well go through a manual exercise of crossing out the names, taking the names on the house to house versus the names on the PLE, and they then strike out the PLE and the claims and objection. With the claims and objections period over, the opposition leader said he's of the opinion that the official list of electors could see a duplication of several names.
Turning now to that GPEX summit with all production set to commence in a matter of weeks in Guyana, several local companies are making preparations to expand their services to cater for an increase in demand. Guyana's telecommunications giant GTT is one of those companies. Speaking to the press today at the Petroleum Summit, GTT's Chief Executive Officer Justin Ned noted that telecommunications play a very important role in the oil sector. He said his company is already seeing an increase in the demand for services. What we've done over the last few years with our rollout of uh, fiber optics uh, to more than 70,000 homes has really played a significant role in making the companies themselves happy uh, being here in terms of their tech telecommunications as well as the workers of the companies because if, if, you're a, if you're an organization and you want expats to come in and they're not happy or the kids are not happy, uh, good luck with that. It's going to be a very difficult situation for you to attract talent. So I think GTT's role in, in making that a little easier for... Mr. Ned said that many companies are looking for production numbers to send them to data centers outside of Guyana. But GTT has yet to reach that full capacity to facilitate all those services. However, he noted it is possible that the necessary upgrades would be done soon. What, what we see is, it's now developing and I know uh, many of the companies are looking to, once, once they start producing, uh, look at those production numbers, send them to data centers outside of, of, of Guyana. So I don't think we've reached full capacity yet. However, I do see it coming very fast because uh, you've, you've seen all the, the press lies of one, uh, I think first oil, I've heard some talks of uh, in a month, uh, some talks of early January. The chief executive officer noted that three to four years ago the entire country used around 10 to 15 gigabytes of data. Today, that demand is much higher because of some oil operators requesting more than 20 gigabytes. The GTT CEO said that with the rollout of more fiber optic services, there will be more growth. GTT is a prime sponsor of GPEX 2019 and this is the second year that the company has thrown its support behind the country's premier oil and gas summit. With oil production expected to start as early as next month, the government of Guyana is moving to set up an account for the Natural Resources Fund. That's according to Finance Minister Winston Jordan. Speaking on the sidelines of the GPEX summit, Minister Jordan told reporters that a decision was made given the announcement of oil production beginning earlier than expected. I come as a regular account at um, Bank of Guyana in the name of um, Natural Resources Fund account. And it will receive the money, so it will be in there. And then... Um, post elections we will uh, be able to establish all the other committees and so on and then they'll take charge of investing the money and so The account is being set up in the absence of talks between the government and the private sector on the decision mechanism for the Natural Resources Fund. We're not, um, waiting, we're not waiting to hear from them. We have already invited them and um, the world is still turning and the oil will be produced so we have to cater for uh, our uh, portion of the oil in the context of royalty and then ultimately profits to uh, make certain that we get that and safely keep it in the account until it's uh, ready to be activated. Minister Jordan explained that the account will be established at the central bank. The Natural Resources Fund was set up to contain a macroeconomic committee comprising qualified representatives of the government, the Bank of Guyana, the private sector commission and the leader of the opposition, as well as a leading international macroeconomic expert. The idea behind the committee is to ensure that it will be responsible for providing the Minister of Finance with a recommendation on the economically sustainable amount, taking into account the effects of additional spending on Guyana's economic competitiveness. The local private sector is yet to appoint anyone to sit on that committee. Well, security and monitoring at Guyana's borders in the country's maritime space, as well as the coastland, are being given a boost with the acquisition of five high-tech, long-endurance drones for the Guyana Defense Force. The drones will be procured at a cost of 180 million Guyana dollars and were catered for in the 2019 budget. The GDF hosted a demonstration exercise of one of the drones yesterday, and according to the State Minister Don Hastings Williams, the procurement proposal was taken to the Defense Board and then the Cabinet for perusal. I am impressed and quite sure my other 
colleague ministers were impressed by the demonstration and what this means to us as a government and to the joint services is that we can enhance the operations that we have embarked on. We have embarked on so many operations, the armadillo, the iron weed, and different operations that and I personally had gone out in the field to witness. So I am happy to know that today the Army is going to be more equipped. Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defense Force Brigadier Patrick West said the acquisition of the drones will significantly enable the force to fulfill its functions and mandate, particularly as it works towards effective transformation for total national defense. We would have had two previous exercises at the Kama where we demonstrated to the Defense Board instruments that we are using within the force to assist us in communicating and providing security across the spectrum of the country of Guyana. And today we intend to add to our fleet some technology which is utilized by the drones here um, to this fleet. Brigadier West also said the drones will assist the force in monitoring activities in the Upper Taka to Upper Esikabo region, where numerous illegal airstrips and abandoned planes were discovered in recent years. We can not only monitor what is happening above us and on the ground, but we were able to monitor um, the movement of persons in the interiors. We were able to do some limited um, anti-piracy patrols within the context of the environment. And this instrument will significantly reduce some cost factors that we have as it relates to fuel. We are in there that we will have another instruments like our boats and uh, aircraft as we move into the 21st century technology for security. The Ghana Defense Force has indicated that extensive research was conducted before the proposal was put forward for the purchase of the drones. The force will be engaging in a contractual agreement with the company Skyfront, which will see it addressing any faults with the drones in a timely manner. In the courts right now, a 25-year-old fisherman was today sentenced to two years in jail over the stabbing of his friend to the neck during a drinking spree. Magistrate Rondell Weaver told the fisherman Kevin Alicock of James Street Old Boys Town that she has found him guilty of the charge of grievous bodily harm. The incident took place back in April. Alicock and the victim are known to each other and were friends for a number of years. However, on the day in question, they were consuming alcohol together at the shop in Old Boys Town when Alicock pulled out a knife and stabbed his friend Joseph Barker to the neck during a row. The injured man was taken to a city hospital while the assailant was arrested and charged. He was led off to jail today to begin his two-year jail sentence. Samuel Suknandan is up next with Across the Region. There once was a man named Stan whose business needed a new plan. Christmas was coming, this much was true. He needed some help but didn't know what to do. Then fast as a flash, three helpers did come from Republic Bank. They came with some. One had low interest rates, one reduced equity, one with approval, so quick and easy. Now Stan is the man and his business is booming. Christmas is good and he is winning. Reach more customers and boost your business with a Republic Small Business Loan today. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. 
Caribbean. Be smart. Buy brand new ST Hobo trucks today. Call 608-4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated. Block B, Public Road, Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. Taking you across the region, I'm Samuel Suknandan. Concerns over security threats in the Commonwealth of Dominica has caused the Customs and Excise Division in Antigua and Barbuda to initiate protocol safety measures. The Observer newspaper in Antigua reports that it received a leaked internal memo which asks Customs officer to comply with a request to fully examine both people and goods arriving in Antigua from Dominica. The memo, which was dated November 19, 2019, stated that effective immediately, all passengers and goods coming out of Dominica via all ports of entry must be subject to 100% examination. Comptroller of Customs in Antigua and Barbuda, Raju Budu, said the development is a standard internal practice whenever there is perceived security threat in CARICOM states. The Comptroller could not divulge the exact reason for the heightened security, but said it could be direct result from the riots in Dominica. There have been protests in Dominica pressing for electoral reform ahead of December's general elections. In Bolivia, that country's interim president has asked Congress to approve new elections as violence rages following the resignation of Evo Morales. However, Janine Inez did not set a date for the poll. Mr. Morales resigned on 10 November and later sought asylum in Mexico after facing claims of electoral fraud. The death toll since October's disputed general election has risen to 32 as clashes continue between supporters of Mr. Morales and security forces. Mr. Morales accused security forces of committing genocide against his indigenous supporters and requested assistance from the international community. His supporters have been blocking main roads linking to the capital La Paz and other major cities, causing widespread disruption across the country. And finally tonight, international news, the Duke of York says he is stepping back from royal duties because the Jeffrey Epstein scandal has become a major disruption to the royal family. 59-year-old Prince Andrew said he had asked the Queen for permission to withdraw for the foreseeable future. He said he deeply sympathized with sex offender Epstein's victims and everyone who wants some form of closure. The Duke has faced a growing backlash following a BBC interview about his friendship with the US financier. Companies he has links with, such as BT and Barclays, have joined universities and charities in distancing themselves from him. For several months, the Duke had been facing questions over his ties with Epstein, who took his own life in August while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. And that's your new source evening bulletin for tonight. Have a good night.